Week two of the college football season. A lot of great action in the Big Ten. Of course, Michigan, a huge game against Texas, but still questions at quarterback. We've got Coach Prime in Colorado taking on Nebraska. We have offensive joggernauts at Penn State and Iowa. Yes, I did say that. We're going to talk about all that. We might even take a shot at Oregon as well. We're going to have some fun because it's time to get the Big Ten squad together. You're talking ball with the Big Ten squad. From USC to Ohio State, from Michigan to Oregon, from Nebraska to Washington, it's the local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network bringing you scoops, breakdowns, and the most comprehensive preview of the upcoming Big Ten weekend. No hurt feelings and thin skin allowed. Squad up. You're part of the Big Ten squad. Welcome aboard as we are here with the Big Ten Conference squad, our weekly visit, and uh, you can just sit back, pop a cold one, and have a good time and listen. I'm Craig Sheeman, host of Lockdown Big Ten. I'm joined by Spencer McLaughlin, host of Lockdown College Football and Lockdown Oregon as well. Matt Sheehan from Lockdown Spartans. we got Jacob Goins from Lockdown Hoosiers, Jay Stevens with Lockdown Buckeyes, Jack Seiko from Lockdown Nittany Lions, Trent Condon from the Lockdown Hawkeyes podcast, Zach Anderson, Yoxmeyer from UCLA and Rose. Roman Tomashoff from Locked On Huskies. Gentlemen, uh, good to be here. Um, I'm glad we got five glorious days in a row of college football together. And uh, now we we look ahead to week two. And uh, there are some big games on the schedule. Uh, Spencer, I'm going to start with you, though, because and I'm guilty of this, too. All summer long, I'm hyping up Oregon. It's going to be Oregon and Ohio State, Oregon this, Oregon that. And uh, you guys barely beat Idaho. What is your assessment? What happened, man? It was all on the offensive line. It, it sounds very simple. It's because it is very simple. Other issues came from the offensive line, but straight up, the offensive line was manhandled by Idaho. Nobody had that on their bingo card when you have two early round draft picks at offensive tackle and two other returners from last year's unit that allowed just five sacks all year. Dylan Gabriel was sacked three times in the first half, including a strip sack that led to a fumble recovery for Idaho. Offensive line, big, big question mark. They were horrible last week and have to be better if they are Oregon will be fine okay so yeah Boise State coming in and uh so no worries for you for week two? Oh no I mean Boise State's got an explosive offense if you're not careful they I think have a good team good coaching staff if you're not careful with Boise State they will walk in Austin Stadium and win Oregon's got to play better and Spencer, Matt, you're, you're not concerned about things. I mean, when you look at an offensive line, you realize this isn't this isn't the Pac-12 anymore, right? This is big boy football. Bullies of the Big Ten are coming for you, but no concerns after Idaho pushes you around. Oh, I mean, the, the concern is there. I'm not in full-blown panic mode because it was one game in the same way. I don't think I was going to have a top five offense because they put up 40 on South Illinois State, Indiana Tech, or whatever it was in, 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 in the first I, week. Matt believes. Matt believes yeah. he's oh, maybe God. the Wait, only if, one. If Oregon yeah. does fall to 0-3 against Boise State, like I've I actually... Actually, it would be 0-4. Get your, oh, your facts oh, right, Roman. Get oh, your facts oh, my, right, my, for I'm, goodness I'm sake. So sorry. <laughs> it would be It would be 0-4. Uh, if Oregon does does not bring a better game than what they showed at Autzen Stadium on Saturday. They will fall to Boise State, and we will have some major questions to answer. Will you show up next week, though? Like, will you still be here, or are you going to be like the guy with the red solo cup and the dog manure down in Texas? <laughs> you know, just <laughs> ran away. Like, will, will you face the music? Well, Let's since I haven't right said now. anything so blatantly stupid to back myself yeah, yeah, yeah. into a corner like that, sure. uh, I will indeed show up because bad yeah. show or bad performances drive content, people. I don't know why that guy just that doesn't fear. Yeah. <laughs> that guy should just fake it with some fudge or something. You get a million views. I don't know why he bailed out. <laughs> it was simple. It was easy. It was easy. Uh, meanwhile, Jay Stevens, all this talking going on, and you're sitting here with the Buckeyes, uh, who are just spectacular. I know it was just Akron, but from what I saw, man, I, I that defense is elite to a next level. Again, I, I'm not even going to temper it because it was Akron. I, I saw some things, man. I saw some things Saturday. Craig, I think you saw some things. I saw some things. But the guy on the corner didn't have a TV. He saw some stuff, too. The Buckeyes defense came out, and they showed everybody that on paper they're supposed to be elite, but on the field they're elite there, which is where it really matters. And I do think this weekend with Western Michigan, the Buckeyes defense, once again, will drive things, control things, and make it very difficult for a Western Michigan team that you're expecting the Buckeyes to blow out. But the Buckeyes defense can continue to get multiple turnovers in the game. A five plus sacks. They had five sacks last week. Wouldn't shock me if they had four or five sacks this weekend again. It's hard to stop. Uh, it's hard to move the ball on a team that has a front four like Ohio State does. I do think the Buckeyes defense will do the same thing they did last week dominate all game long. 
Ohio State taking a page out of Michigan's book with the non-conference schedule. I respect it. Hey, hey, hey. I That's all Washington. <laughs> I just Washington can't didn't want a non-conference game this year. They joined the Big Ten and just ripped up the contract. Well, yeah. I, 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 again, I, you can assign blame wherever you'd like. I thought it was Ohio State that initiated the, the pullout of, of the matchup there. But Utah and Baylor are playing this week in a non-conference game, which should be a non-conference game, but alas, it is not. And here I am on Locked on Big Ten. Jay, I feel, like, I feel like a, I feel like a presidential moderator here. I got to let Roman answer for the Huskies here. I got to jump in. <laughs> yeah, hold on. That that certainly felt more mutual than anything else. There there was definitely felt, you know, maybe a little more blame on the Ohio State side. I, for one, am relieved we don't need to see these two teams match up this year with, with all, all the turnover that's going on. But yeah, come, come on, man. That was... This is this is nowhere near. The she level. didn't dump me. It was a mutual parting of ways. <laughs> That's right. That's what Craig, it sounds like. Craig, can we talk about UCLA? I hate to jump on the Bruins, but Indiana I don't. was there week three, and they almost lost to Hawaii week one. I have to have some sort of explanation here because who's your fans are feeling good, and we got them coming up next week. <laughs> We're feeling good. <laughs> I am. Say it with your chest, Craig. Come on, let's go. Keep it upbeat. <laughs> Uh, Zach, how about you locked on UCLA? Nice trip out for a nice luau, probably roasted a pig, kicked a game-winning field goal and came home. Any other thoughts from that? Yeah, I was sitting on the couch, and next thing you know, I was watching some horrible football for three hours, at least from one perspective. <laughs> and I realized, oh, the offensive line still sucks. The quarterback play was more mm. mediocre than I would have hoped, and mm. the defense was surprisingly good. Although their quarterback was hobbled, their best receiver had a hurt finger. And it took mm. UCLA to forget how to cover a punt for Hawaii to get their only touchdown. So who knows? Mm. Uh, Zach Seiko, uh, who was that masquerading as Penn State offense this weekend with some of the most creative? And they didn't go very deep into the playbook because they wanted to save some. But man, wow, that was kind of fun. It is it is crazy how Penn State didn't make any like any significant roster changes, but they made one crucial change, and that was get rid of Mike Yersich as soon as possible and start doing your research and, and plotting to go get Andy Kotelnicki as soon as possible. And you can see it showed up already in week one. Yeah, no question. All right, Trent Condon, is Iowa a defensive team or an offensive team this year? Well, they're always a defensive team. That's where it's going to start here. But now you take an elite defense that has led this team for the past decade plus, and maybe you add even a competent offense Look out here. What you saw a year ago in the Big Ten Championship game was a disaster. What you saw two years ago in the Big Ten Championship game was a disaster. Spencer Petras is not around anymore. Fat Deacon Hill is gone. Cade McNamara looked like the quarterback we saw three years ago that led Michigan to their first Big Ten title in 17 years. He's healthy. He's accurate. If we see that guy throughout the course of the year, coupled with that defense, look out. Yeah, I'm even talking to you, Jay. We'll see you in October. Trent, Trent, I, Trent I'm, a, okay. I'm a little bitter because okay. you Hold on. said, hold on, wait. hold on, Trent, you, you have to, you have to crawl before you can walk no i like you this. have to this walk before you can run you have to jog before you can sprint and you have to run a marathon before you get to ohio state's level this, this is team. the only nice thing i'll say about about uh iowa's offense this season spencer they scored more points than than your offense did which is you know supposed to be the best in the country i you know i'm just, just throwing that out there he got fired Oh, valid, valid. Trent, Trent, I'm a little bitter because you've said on your show, and I think on on this uh, Big Ten powwow here, that the under was a lock all season long. So what the heck happened? Well, you got to get it at the right time. If you would have got it on the opener at Fanduel at forty awesome. and a half, oh, that, this yeah. guy. Oh, come on, find wow, it at the right was time, it really guys. forty and a half? I got beat by the Vegas hook. is it's so big. rigged. It's so rigged. <laughs> That's unbelievable. No, honestly, guys, I mean, it is. You're, you're right. This thing is not going to be ridiculous right off the bat here. But this is what we've been asking for the last couple of years. You guys know how good this defense is and how good it can be and, and the way they can slow things down. Uh, Penn State last year is a 10 nothing game. They're on the field for 100 plays against the Nittany Lions a year ago. If you just have an offense that can move the football, get a couple of first downs, get a couple of scores, just be average. With this defense, they're going to be right there in all of these football games. I included Columbus. Yeah, 55-24 still in my memory with uh, Kinnick Stadium the last time that they made their way there. I was played well in these big games until the last couple of years when this offense is really cratered. Back to average is a big step forward. Back to average. All right. On that note, we'll explore a little bit more about these juggernaut offenses at Penn State and Iowa as the squad is sitting back talking some Big Ten football here.
Well, you heard us talking about that hook, that half point, the 40 and a half with Iowa. You know, that's what FanDuel is all about. And of course, our show is brought to you by FanDuel. It is America's number one sports book. And we have something a little different for you here. I want you to pay attention to this. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon on a market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel anytime. So just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and download America's number one sports book, FanDuel. As we continue with the Locked On Big Ten squad here, we got uh, week two coming up for the, um, the upcoming weekend that we're very excited about. I want to get some of you guys' thoughts on some games that not necessarily teams you follow, but uh, you know we don't have our Locked On Wolverines. Isaiah couldn't make it here today. You guys are here. I want to talk about that game. I want to talk about the Nebraska-Colorado game as well. But first, uh, Matt uh, from Locked On Spartans. You know, Aiden Childs, your guy, he said, hey, man, bet on the over. Because we were talking about uh, yeah. the 40 and a half with Iowa. They didn't quite get there uh, this weekend. Just short. Yeah, they were an extra point away from hitting the over there. Uh, I think, yeah. Was the over under 26 and a half? I'm trying to remember what it was uh, before the weekend. Nevertheless, uh, not great. And I'll tell you what doesn't help in a college football game. And this might be a little too analytical for some people. But um, turning the ball over three times in the red zone really doesn't help put points on the scoreboard. It, uh, yeah. So if you're listening out there and if you're a part of an offensive staff, Try to stray away from that in your game this upcoming Saturday because that's exactly what Michigan State did. Uh, look, he was pressing in the second half. He had a completion percentage of below 50%. Not a great game by any stretch of the imagination for Aiden Childs, but if you're looking for me to panic, you know, try to put him in a UPS box and ship him back to Corvallis, I, it, it's going to take at least a few more weeks. I've seen that performance for me to be completely out on Aiden Childs. We see the zip on his throw. He's got legs to extend place. He's got a powerful arm. Yes, we've seen the Joe Milton's of the world have all those traits and it not, you know, transpire. But I'm going to give it some time here before I, you know, mark this up as a complete loss. I know that's not what we're supposed to do here. We're supposed to overreact and everything, but I I'm actually going to be patient, which is. I'm surprised. I'm really all surprised. Right. Nicely Maybe. done. Yeah, I know, same. Very diplomatic. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to overreact for you, Matt, and I'm going to make a note of, of that that just genius advice you gave us and make sure yeah, I pass that you. along to Jed Fish and the coaching staff for this week. So, so mm. thank yeah, you. if it's fourth and one, don't let three guys on the defense into your backfield right when the running back gets the ball. Uh, make sure you guys don't fumble. I and if you're going to throw a five-yard out route on third and goal to five, make sure there's not a quarterback between you and the receiver. So I, it's just, yeah, again, that'd be, advice. That'd be good. Ooh, I got one. I got one. Yeah, I got one. Go. I got one. Yeah. If you're if you're if you're going up against an FCS team and you're just on your on your own side of the forty and you're thinking, you sure. know what, it's fourth and less than yard, we should just go for it, run the football and pick it up every single time. That's the correct mentality to have. What's not advisable is don't have the extra offensive lineman in the jumbo package whiff on his block. Don't have the fullback mm -hmm. run into that offensive lineman. And on the same play, don't also have the pulling guard trip over the turf monster because it turns out <laughs> out if the three guys that are supposed to clear the path for the running back are all um, a wall, shall we say, you're going to go backwards even if you're playing a high school team. So guys, it's not advisable. I was going to say Little League. Sounds like, like a fifth grade team right there. What are uh, we complaining it's, about? It, it is, it, it, it's, on. one of the, it's one of the most uh, horribly hilarious plays I've ever seen from Oregon football. Call it the Oregon version of the butt fumble, except thank goodness they won the football game. <laughs> look, look, look. All you got to do is score a good amount of points, play some defense, win your week one game, have no stresses. That's how we do it in Bloomington. Just yeah. copy and paste mm -hmm. and you guys are going to be here. just fine. By the <laughs> way, go. Jacob, I have, I, have a, I have a question for you. Uh, I probably on a, have an answer. On a scale of 1 to 10, how concerned are you at the prospect of a 1 and 11 season? If you can't can't beat UCLA. <laughs> well, I think we do beat UCLA. I'll just be honest with you. But no, that wasn't a question. Uh, that's the answer, though. And so one and 11 is not physically possible. Ah, you fans are never this UCLA. confident. I don't know what's going on right now. We're going to be I two. Like we play Western Illinois on Friday night. Come on. I like how Hoosiers James Bruins Madison. is better than Buckeyes Ducks or Wolverines or Longhorns. Like, 
UCLA Indiana is the marquee matchup on this show. I, <laughs> I, I don't know how we got here, but I absolutely love it. Let's the go. Battle for la- the, 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 the battle for last place, which I uh, am, am realizing is actually next week, uh, not this week. Good luck with Western Illinois. Did they actually win a football game? Uh, you tell mm. me. I don't, I don't think. No, no I don't think they have. Their losing streak is over 20. Um, just so you know. So if you lose just that true. game, that's that's a problem. But by the hey, time Oregon uh, keeps playing like they are, you'll be right there with us, brother. Mm, yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> can't wait. But uh, if 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 that UCLA game comes around and you go to the Rose Bowl and don't win, I'm I'm just I'm not saying you should ask what Kurt Signetti's buyout is. I'm just saying you should think about it. <laughs> oh, Jesus, wait a minute. I think, I think Indiana, trip, we're, we're still buying out one football coach and maybe two basketball coaches. We can't buy out anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to put our we got to save our money for for other things. We can't pay that many people. That's right. That's right. Uh, Jay, um, Will Howard was a 59% passer for four years at Kansas State. He yeah. completed 61% mm-hmm. against Akron. So mm-hmm. he is what he is. And then yes. did, it, did it hurt seeing Kyle McCord tear it up at Syracuse? No, because it was expected. I expected this from, from Will Howard. I expected that from Kyle McCord. I have it on the record all offseason. I'll say it again now. I was never the one to say that Will Howard was a major upgrade over Kyle McCord. I said it was really – I'm not sure that he is. And I don't think Ohio State needs a major upgrade over Kyle McCord to do what they want to do this year. They just need a guy. They just need someone to take care of the ball, which Will Howard made a mistake there early in the game, made a really bad decision. But outside of that, they just need Will Howard to take care of the football, hand the ball off, make sure he gets the ball to his receivers. Now, it sounds simple. The accuracy to me does make me a little bit nervous. But when you're comparing McCord and Howard, I expected that from McCord. I expected this from Howard. He just – he's lucky that he has the receivers he has. And once the offensive line gets up to, up to speed and they figure out who's going to be the five this year – that's going to be a whole lot better for the running game, too. Okay. All right. Anybody else uh, feeling sorry for Ohio State with a 59% passer at quarterback? Are we going no, to game manage them to the top? No. no I, having gripes about a 50-point win. Like, <laughs> what an amazing <laughs> Must lifestyle be nice. some people live. Must my be nice. God. Yeah. Must Jesus. be nice. You know, it's reminiscent of when I go to my friends and I tell them about how poorly I played when I carved a 76. And I'm like, yeah, I play like <laughs> crap right. today. Okay, I don't be lying on this so, I suck no. so – dog, I shot 75 today and did not make a single – birdie i'm not thrilled Ooh, about it hack. i'm not oh, thrilled wow. exactly see now jay yeah. and i are in the same boat wait a minute dylan <laughs> gabriel completed 80 percent of his passes they're all that's for, true for did you know he tied he tied an oregon record for pass completions in a game with 41 he threw 49 i thought we had somehow resurrected mike leach which would be great r.i.p pirate forever yeah, but <laughs> but like I, I was honestly shocked. I knew Oregon had to throw the ball a lot because I don't know if they could have run the ball against a high school team on Saturday with the way the offensive line was playing. But to see Gabriel's stat line at 41 of 49 was astonishingly high. You had How two healthy running backs. Less than Bo Nix. Yeah, That's just, I would have thought you would have scored 50 points with that kind of. You would of think numbers. you would you would you you would think. But you have a holding penalty in the red zone. Dylan Gabriel misses a couple of, of touchdown throws looking elsewhere. You allow him to get stripped because you get beat by Idaho's defensive end. I mean, <laughs> these sorts of things just kind of added up. We had the same offensive tackle. I kid you not line up incorrectly twice in the same game. He was off the line of scrimmage, illegal formation on the offense. Yeah, I think they can correct that. Okay, I hope uh, so. guys, oh if I can, uh, can we do a quick round robin? Uh, t- the two big games on the schedule: Michigan and Texas, and uh, um, Nebraska is uh, is hosting Colorado. Quick thoughts: mm-hmm. round robin. Spencer up top, and we'll, I feel like the Brady bunch here with all you guys. <laughs> Spencer, <laughs> give me quick predictions on both of those games. I wonder which Brady bunch brother i am that's a nice tongue twister i came up with uh i've got uh, i've got texas going into ann arbor and, and winning I, I i like michigan's defense a lot i have the utmost faith though in texas's offensive line i think teams that have a great offensive line are going to beat michigan this year and negate what is clearly their, or at least be able to mitigate what is their greatest strength and michigan doesn't have the talent and depth elsewhere particularly a quarterback to keep up with quinn ewers and the longhorns so i like texas to win i like texas to cover the six and a half number as well nebraska colorado this was a 20 point game in favor of the buffs last year and you're going to see a dylan gabriel fueled red river showdown flip 
in that one year they lost 49 nothing. Gabriel plays and they win the game outright. And I think that is going to happen for Nebraska this year. I think they, they, they win the game. We'll see how I feel about the cover. All right, uh, rapid fire. Matt, I know you got some diapers to change or something. Go ahead. Give me your prediction. Sure. No, I do. Again, it's shockingly not my own after that six-point win over FAU. But, uh, <laughs> look, I think it's going to be low scoring, obviously. Both teams have great defenses. Texas 20, Michigan 17. I will be hedging my happiness on FanDuel because if I got to see Michigan at least win or keep it close, I want to be compensated for it. And then Nebraska-Colorado, weird score. Give me, like, 26-19 Cornhuskers. That's going to be an odd one. All right. Roman. Horns down. Uh, Spencer, you know what negates a great offensive line? Mm. Mason Graham. Mm. Uh, you you, you know good. how I know that? Because I saw it in person at the national championship. Yeah, that's true. It's, 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 it's not pretty. G- give me Michigan. I, it, you know, it pains me to do it as, as a Washington guy, but give me them. And I, I, I say Nebraska rules. I was not impressed at all. And what I saw from Colorado out, outside of Travis Hunter. So, so give me, give me Nebraska by double digits. All right, Jay. I'm going to make it really, really quick for you. I got Texas going into Ann Arbor and winning by 10 plus points. And I think Nebraska beats Colorado. I don't know what's going on with with Colorado right now. Uh, I I I bought into them early last year. I got fooled. I'm not doing it again. I got Nebraska winning this time. Uh, True freshman quarterback does some big things on Saturday. All right, Jacob, final word. Yep, I'm going to echo what Jay and Spencer said. I have Texas winning. I have them covering whether you get six and a half, seven and a half, nine and a half. Give me Texas to go into the big house and take down Michigan. And then, yeah, Colorado, I mean, they were abysmal. They embarrassed themselves on national TV last week. Give me Nebraska. I never have faith in them, but I do against Colorado. Give me Nebraska. All right, very good. Now, it's not that we don't trust your opinions and your predictions, but we're going to bring in the rest of our panel after this. So don't go away as we continue with the squad here on Locked On Big Ten. Hey, when you're hiring for a small business and you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role, uh, that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs, right? LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and free. It's always a pain when you have to look and hire and always be getting new people in your office. It can be risky sometimes. You want to get the right people. LinkedIn Jobs makes this very easy. It's not just a job board. They help you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those that aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to that perfect role you could have for them. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are weary, so many hats uh, have to be worn by everybody. You know, it's, it's tiring running a small business. You're up 20 hours a day, you got a lot to do. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make the process easier. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. The Locked On Big Ten squad continues. Of course, we still have Spencer with us. Uh, he's, he's doing the marathon version. He's with us for every segment here today. Uh, Zach from Locked On uh, UCLA is back, as is Trent from Locked On Hawkeyes. And again, for you two, uh, Zach and Trent, I do want to get your thoughts on some of the other big games. Spencer just gave me his a uh, moment ago. Uh, but first, a uh, final thought. I, again, I'm just enamored with the Iowa Hawkeyes, Trent. And uh, by the way, good to talk to you not in a car this time. Your mobile <laughs> studio, you've uh, you've made it back. That's good. I took uh, Trent's mobile studio. That's yeah. right. <laughs> you know, it's funny. The um, You the stole Iowa- his car? My goodness, man. That's a dangerous thing to say when we're on the air. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, I needed a new one after mine got stolen. <laughs> oh, wow. We're getting deep real fast here. You West uh, Coast guys are making me nervous. <laughs> Welcome, welcome to, to the, the Rose Bowl. Welcome <laughs> to the big city, Trent. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but Trent, I was uh, look. The Iowa game was six nothing at the half, and I just shook my head. I'm like, okay, that's Iowa being Iowa. But the the forty to nothing in the second half, I, I'm just enamored with it. Um, you know, um, maybe Kirk Ferentz needs to sit a few more out. I have I say that with all due respect. I love the guy. Yeah. Um, but I, I guess people, you got the big rival game coming up this weekend for the uh, for the Cyhawks. It's a a really entertaining week, obviously, here in the state. And you couple that with Iowa, Iowa State, big brother, little brother. I mean, it's it's the whole thing. Like, I'm in my mid-40s, growing up in the 80s. And this is not being, you know, that Hawkeye fan to Iowa State fans. Iowa State just wasn't at the same level. I mean, Iowa was up there competing under Hayden Fry, winning Big Ten championships, and they were the worst team in the Big Eight year after year. And it was a blowout year after year. But it was actually my freshman year at college. what? 15 I'm year kidding. win streak. I, re- yeah. I remember. I, <laughs> a 15 well, year win streak, though, for Iowa. I they actually don't remember. Low. I just know. <laughs> <laughs> and after 15 years, it changed. And it was five consecutive for Iowa State. So since then, this rivalry has been really good. 
Iowa State's really banged up, though. As bad as, you know, we kind of talked about UCLA and their matchup, and, and Spencer mm-hmm. with you and what happened against Idaho, Iowa State won 21-3 to against North Dakota. Not North Dakota State, just North Dakota. So yeah. this is a team that's really banged up. It doesn't happen often lately, but this has the feeling to me that I was not just going to win. They're going to win decisively. And I think, you know, Iowa on the fringes of the top 25, I think it's going to change the perception. This is a CBS game. You get the national eyeballs on it. I think a big blowout here is going to continue the narrative. Hey, maybe this Iowa offense and this Iowa team a little bit more than just kind of uh, the one that can beat the sisters of the poor of the old Big Ten West. Is this going to be on uh, CBS and have everyone's favorite music? Bam, 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 bam. Oh, yeah, and, and ready, get ready for it. They'll have the corn fields out there, even though you yeah, have the corns yeah. not being uh, pulled up quite yet. Yes, they're going to have all those shots. You'll... Are they going to have ghost baseball? Oh, yeah. They should have a ghost baseball. They should. We need Are they going to agree. pull the channel away from us right before the game starts? <laughs> <laughs> no, have we just, ever... Just... Hold up. Hold up. Quick, quick side note. <laughs> have we ever... And I'm relying on the two Wiley veterans here who have been watching television a long, lot longer than I've been alive. Sorry, guys, but that's the way it is. World. Have we ever had as many programming issues for college football television than we have in the last week? Viewers out West who had Comcast, could not watch Washington and Oregon play their first games in the or UCLA. USC was on national television, of course. Mm-hmm. And then you had the direct TV debacle where they cut away from AB. Like, guys, what are we doing here? Has this ever happened before? Young man, yeah. let me bring you back to the beginning of the Big Ten uh, Network. And, Craig, you can definitely fill in the details of that one. Game one, Michigan-Appalachian State, one of the biggest upsets. Most people across the Midwest we're not able to see that. Most of the local cable systems didn't have it. You guys are going through it now, but yeah, Craig, as you know, something we went through years ago. Oh, there I thought was we got that? rid of the Pac-12 network. I'm done with this. Yeah, Zach and I just went through this. We changed yeah. conferences to so that people didn't have to deal with this crap, and then here we are with the same issues. Believe I mean, it, it's believe so it bad that Comcast used- was getting dunked on by the Oregon State Athletic Department, just oh. taking body blows. It's not fair for anybody. I used, I used to live in L.A. There was a new TV deal, and for two years, couldn't see the Dodgers or the Lakers on local TV. And then I moved to Houston, and the same thing happened with the Rockets and the Astros. I, I it, It's... <sighs> Idiots. It's it is hideous. So just, uh, just uh, no, I said idiots. Though it is oh, hideous. It's hideous it's and they're hideous. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like where are you idiots. now, Craig? Who can't watch their games? Who? Where's, where's the curse going? Uh, you know what? I don't know what's next. Just follow the money trail for sure. Um, Zach, while you, let me put you in an awkward spot since we don't have our locked on Trojans guy here, and they're your arch rival. Uh, that was the entertaining game of the weekend this past weekend. It looks like USC short up its defense with your defensive coordinator just enough to be really good. Yeah, let me to my own horn. I think I, my prediction was the closest last week, but we'll we'll go for that for another segment. Um, USC, they looked better. They're helped out that LSU went for it on fourth down in the beginning of the game. I think you take the points. That was a little shocking for Brian Kelly there. <laughs> and that kind of gave them the confidence because LSU went right down the field and was not stopped until they stopped themselves. Yeah. And then they gave USC confidence. Miller Moss could complete some passes. And I thought LSU should have won the game, but credit to the Trojans. They got the job done. They made my prediction look smart. Reverse jinxes don't work, so I'm disappointed. <laughs> All right. And, and, Zach, why don't you give me a prediction? Michigan and Texas at the big house is the big one, and Coach Prime at Nebraska. I'm getting everybody's take. I already got Spencer's. How about you, Zach? Ooh, man. After Texas was able to prove everybody get to the CFP last year, beating Alabama, I got to prove, I think Texas can beat Michigan. I got no love lost with Michigan after they canceled the UCLA series from a few years ago and all their nonsense. Texas by 10. And then there's no trust in Colorado. Not that Nebraska has been anything trustworthy, but I'd like to think that a quarterback who can have his line protect him, I think a little bit more than Sanders has his line. I'm going to go with Nebraska plus 13 or minus 13. All right, Trent. What do you think? Those two games. I watched uh, almost all the Michigan game, and I just walked away so unsatisfied. That offense is hideous. They got big-time issues. They don't have a quarterback, and when you don't have a quarterback, you don't have a chance here. I was not a Texas believer. I got uh, in my back pocket, my portfolio, I got a no uh, ticket for them to make the college football playoff, but I don't think that conversation starts here. I think Texas absolutely rolls in this game. Probably low scoring somewhat, but 20-7. to Twenty-three, six, something in those range. How's Michigan going to score? That's what I keep coming back to. Defense is good. I think that defense is going to be on the field a ton. 
All right, I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Great job. I invite all of our listeners and viewers to uh, go ahead and subscribe and follow and share all these guys. They do a great job for you and your favorite teams every single day. Follow and subscribe your favorite Big Ten team, and we'll be covering your favorite teams every day, and then we get together once a week for our little chit-chat as well throughout the season. And don't forget, I got you covered for the entire conference. Yeah, these guys only cover one team. I got to do a whole conference. It's it's it's, it's whoa, a play. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who's, who's <laughs> these guys, pale face? You talk about them two down there. <laughs> You're right, Spencer. Locked on college football. He's got it covered, too. Uh, we're all over the place on Lockdown, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.